Can you get a 100 break just by improving your positional play in snooker? Well if it's possible and you're willing to give it a try, then this video is going to show you how to do that. This is Break From Life. Welcome back, and if this is the first time you've watched one of our videos, then it's fantastic to have you here. Nothing increases the chances of you winning a game more than improving your control over a game. This right here causes me to lose more frames than probably anything else in a game of snooker, and I think it's something we all do at some level. I've potted a red and finished on a make or break colour and I'm, all I'm thinking on this well I've got to pot it and I've, 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 potted, I've potted it so this is a make but all of a sudden I realise well am I actually on a red and I'm not on a red and end up playing safe and a lot of the time no matter what I do my opponent eventually gets a chance knocks a ball in maybe I leave them in maybe they knock a long red in but they still get a chance and it's all because the make or break blue wasn't a make or break blue unless I got the position right. But under pressure I couldn't really cope with this and this is probably why I lose games to better players more than anything else. So let's look at how we can deal with this starting with our basic positional play. Because if you can get your head around the three things I'm going to show you, I truly believe that it's only your knowledge of the game and your own nerve that will stop you being able to have a hundred break. In this little break I'm having here, I'm going to play zero difficult pots and one very slightly difficult positional shot and I'm going to have a 36 break. And it's the first step I'm showing you to really be able to break build and that's just simply to play a straight stun shot to be able to stop the ball dead, maybe screw back a little bit, maybe run through a little bit, just little tiny fractions and not really do anything. By the way, here's the one positional shot. And I only had to use the side cushion here because I ran very, very slightly out of position. But I'll explain how to deal with this later. Now I know all these balls were absolutely ideally placed. But sometimes in a game you find that one or two are. And if you understand everything coming up in this video, you're going to be able to go from one set of simple shots to another. Now I know there's an awful lot of people out there who won't find potting these shots simple. But we can do something about that. If you want to make simple pots consistently, then try our video snooker aiming system. It's in the card right now and also on our channel page. And while you're there, make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and check out our new website. Here's how I'm going to rank positional shots or how well you're in position. This is what I'd describe as a first level shot where really all you're trying to do is pop the ball, maybe because it's so difficult or you're just going to be going away from position and there's no real way to stay in good position. And this is what I describe as a second level shot where you're playing position now but you're not going to be on it nicely. Maybe we're just playing top side of the blue, that's all we're doing. We can't really get on exact position. And this is what I'm describing as a third level shot where you've got a simple position and pot to be able to play, in that case, the pot on the red, get on the blue nicely and think about getting on the blue in a way that gets you to the next red as well. So this is the second step, the thing you need to be able to do to become a good break builder and that's roll the ball through the correct amount on a sort of shot like this, getting exactly where we want to go. Now as I showed with my cue there, that's exactly where I wanted the white to go and the ability to do this is critical and something I suggest spending a lot of time practicing. The third thing is finding the correct angles. If we were straight on this black it would be a problem to get on the next red. On the previous shot it was perfectly okay to be straight because we wanted the cue ball to go directly in front of the red. On this shot we want the cue ball to go about here somewhere for this red and we can't do that easily if we're straight and ideally that's why we want to be here because that allows us to play a stun shot up to here and this is 
the second part of step three really being able to play these little angled stun shots get being able to get the right angle and play the little stun shots off these angles that will allow you good control of the cue ball if we were high we'd still be able to get on it if we were straight we still can get on it straight it just makes it an awful lot harder so this is the three main things you need to practice really in the entire game of snooker because these three things are more valuable than probably anything else in the game and it's all because you can use them like this look at where my cue is now that's where I'm going to be finishing off the black and that's the shot I'm looking at I'm looking at playing the red so perfectly onto the black that I'm going to have a simple shot to get on that next red and this is the sort of third level shot that I was talking about earlier on this black I'm in such good position still that I can be thinking about playing for the black again and if if I'm getting it wrong I want to finish high not low like there because if I finish low I can only have I'll only have an angle to go up for the blue and if I finish the wrong side of the blue I could end up hitting a bolt color and ending up on the bolt cushion and it all, all goes so wrong from such a perfect position so if anything I want to go too high but I'm playing the shot from such perfect position that I'm thinking about playing the next positional shot off the red so here if you notice I've potted the black and if I leave the white exactly here I'm going to have a perfect angle to finish on this red again so I'm still in such good position that if I leave the white exactly where it is there I'm going to be perfect for the red and I want to leave it low this time so I can go up for the colours because the next thing I'm going to be doing is going for the yellow eventually. So what I'm going to be doing here is just trying to leave it here on an angle. So I've already left myself the perfect angle so I'm going to be fairly good on this red. All I've got to do is play the pot, get the pot at the correct pace. I don't have to do anything else. Then I can, all I'm thinking about then is playing the next positional shot up to all of those belt colours. I've overhit this slightly, so I finished straight. Now I wanted to be able to play up for the bolt colours because I would have had more options. Now I've got two choices, screw back for there or just leave the white where it is. Now I'm going to leave it where it is because that's the most simple way to get on the yellow. Because I can get on the yellow from exactly where the shot is. So this is again the first step I talked about, simple stun shot. Now we're still in this third level position like I was talking about this is going to go down to second because we're not going to be thinking about getting on the green too much here we're just going to be getting somewhere near the yellow to be able to play a positional shot on the green hopefully and this is what you'll find you have to step down a level so we're going to be trying not to go too close to the pink we'll still be trying to play as accurate a positional shot as possible it's just that the positional shot is a lot harder and we can't really afford to be thinking about playing the next shot too much. Learning of the way the white comes off the top cushion like this is all the little knowledge of the game things that I said will affect you earlier if you can't do them. Here I've got a critical positional shot. I've got to finish here nicely on the green and these are the key shots that come up every now and again when you step down to that sort of second level of positional play these are the key shots that will unlock massive scoring potential in your game and if you notice I gave it a lot of concentration and attention because it was a difficult pot and now I'm back in the sort of third level position again so I'm able to pot the green I'm playing the green to get the right position from brown to blue I'm playing the brown to get the right position on the pink I've gone a little bit too far again and this is sort of mean that I'm nearly stepping down I'm having to play it off the bolt cushion positions not going to be exact again and this is where things can go wrong and I actually finished straight on the pink here and I had to sort of again play a sort of second level positional shot where something can go very slightly wrong and I get very lucky to finish on the black but that's the key to this really, staying in that third level for as long as possible and when you have to step down, coming back as quickly as possible. And this is why this works so well even on tricky shots like this. Because here what we're going to do is leave the white roughly where my fingers are there and that's the perfect angle to just pot the black and cannon that red off the side cushion. So all I'm going to do is play this shot 
at the correct way and that was the difficult shot the black isn't the difficult shot the difficult shot was playing the white to exactly that position so you're always going to be stepping down to level two like this because you're going to pop the black can on the red and not know where it's going to go but if you can stay in the third level until you get into this position and then hopefully you're going to only have one shot where you don't know where you're playing position for you have one shot i don't know what color i'm going to play for next off this one but i get the cannon and i can choose what shot i'm going to play next from there here's a similar situation because i want to split the reds another tough situation but i'm going to play low of the blue to get on this other red because splitting if i split those reds off the blue that top red isn't really going to help me that much so i'm going to maintain third level position so i can get a perfect angle on the blue to split the reds i've already looked at it here i know exactly where it wants to be i can play the white exactly where it needs to go and then when i play the shot I'm absolutely perfect on the blue and I've done the hard work already now this is still a it's still a lot can go wrong on this and you're dropping down to the second level but stay on that third level for as long as you can and we've got to play another key shot here this is a key shot because we've done all the hard work we've got this difficult again second level shot but we can get straight back to level three if we can get this so that's the sort of shot you need to have most concentration on if you want the huge brakes to start mounting up then learn to play three shots ahead snooker and practice the positional shots in all these steps because if you can do all this you will start to get all the right shots that will help you improve at the game more quickly all you've got to do is get all the angles right and snooker angle shots explains exactly how you can do that and find out about our cam aiming system in snooker aiming system and remember don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel see you later